Another great chapter of the Bible, Zechariah chapter 11. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Now, um, Lebanon was known for the cedars and their forests. The fire may devour thy forest fire. The Bible says in the tribulation period that one third of the, the trees are going to burn. How for a tree? That's the tree. How? For the cedar is fallen. Cedars are, are a great tree. They smell great. Fragrance. Because the mighty are spoiled. How? O ye oaks of Bashan, another tree. For the forest of the vintage, an old forest, is come down. Destruction of a forest. There is a voice of howling of the shepherds. That's the people in charge of sheep. They're howling. And the howl of verse 2 is the howl because things are being destroyed. The voice of howling of the shepherds. Destruction. Scripture with scripture. For their glory is spoiled. Whose glory? The shepherds. Look who I am. Look at the names and titles I got. Look at all the money I got. Look at the car I drive. Look at the gold teeth I have. Look at all the followers I got. And their glory shall be spoiled. Taken. A voice of the roaring of young lions. Chasing the shepherds. David the shepherd beat a lion. Now here's a lion going after the shepherds. The adversary, the devil, seeking about who he may devour. The, for the pride, lions, pride, shepherd. This is a great subject of chapter, uh, verse 3. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. The country, the area. They were lofty. Now people are going in and taking all their stuff. Thus saith the Lord, my God, Zechariah's God, feed the flock of the slaughter, and that's Jews, under Egypt, under Babylon, under Assyria, under all the nations that have spoiled them and, and conquered them and tried to destroy them, Rome, whose processors, who's, who's taking control of them, Egypt had them as slaves. Slay, uh, as, whose possessors slay them. Jews were killed by heathen. They were killed in Egypt. They were killed in Babylon. And hold themselves not guilty. Who cares we killed the Jew? Adolf Hitler never felt any guilt about what he'd done to the Jews. That's what it's talking about. The Jews are being killed and they don't care. And matter of fact, even the courts may say, not guilty. And they that sell them say, all right, selling the Jews. Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. I'm making money on the Jews. God is blessing me because I am selling his people. That's what they're saying. And their own shepherds, their own shepherds, their own Jewish shepherds, pity them not. They're, they're, they're getting it from the outside and they're getting it from the inside. So along comes the shepherd, John chapter 10. The chief shepherd, Peter speaks about. The lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. He became a sheep for the sheep. Now he's the shepherd. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land. That would probably soon what he's talking about. All those that are against the people, including their own. Saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, everyone, into his neighbor's hand. 
That whole landmass, if you look at a map, the entire Middle East is against the Middle East. You're never going to get peace over there. You, you get okay if you were to get them to pe have peace with with the Jews. Ishmael will get up a, a, a war with the the, I'm to think, the Syrians, and then the Saudi Arabians will blow it, and then Yemen will blow it, and then Iraq will blow it. They're just one big pot of anger, and I want your land. And into the hand of his king, rulers. And they shall smite the land. Bombs. Blood. Sword. Dead bodies. Cut trees down. Destroy the cities. Move rocks. And out of their hand, I will not deliver them. Can you imagine going to battle and God says, I ain't going to help you. You just might as well take your sword or your gun and then shoot yourself. Might as well. You're going to get just as good. I will feed the flock of slaughter. Back verse 4. The Jews. Even you, O poor the flock. Poor sheep. I don't mean poor sheep. I mean poor. No money, no income, just making it, probably sick. And I took unto me two staffs. Now that's a shepherd's instrument. A shepherd has a rod. He has a staff. David had a slingshot. A staff is, is that pole that you uh, it, uh, curved. You see around Christmas time, the staff or staves is a long pole. Staves were used to carry the Ark of the Covenant. So we're taking two staves here that were likened to what bore upon the Levite's shoulders to move the brazen altar, the table of incense, the uh, the prayer incense altar and uh, um, the Ark of the Covenant. They're sticks. They're poles. And the one I call beauty. Capital B. And the other I call bands. Capital B. And I fed the flock with these. Evidently, the shepherds weren't feeding. The shepherds in another place where, you know, they were eating the meat of the sheep. They were living off the sheep and not giving anything back. Three shepherds, I have no idea. Also, I cut off in one month. Who are these particular three shepherds? I have no idea. But there's a shepherd coming up in verse 17. We'll get there. Who these three shepherds are, I don't know. I, God, will cut off in one month. You know what it means to be cut off in the Bible? You go to hell. In one month, 30 days. And my soul loathes them. God hates them. God, you have hatred? No. Liberal God is love, and their soul also abhorred me. God hates them, and their living substance, their eternalness, abhors God. You think these guys are going to be in heaven? No. Is it that idol shepherd verse 17? It could be. It, well, I don't know how a man could, in his soul truly hate God. The Bible says if a man says in his heart that there's no God, he's a fool. He just doesn't know any better. But here is somebody that just hates God with all. I've never met anybody like that. You may have. And you're not in a good situation if you have that hatred toward God. 
there is no saving you. Only the Holy Spirit can break that heart. Then said I, God, I will not feed you. That, that diet. I like that. That, that diet. I don't know what an English teacher says with that one. Let it die. That's God speaking. You know, Jesus told a man, oh, let me go back and bury my father. Let the dead bury the dead. You better start walking with me. You know, there's people who don't want to serve the Lord who don't want to do anything with God. Just let them die. Witness to them. Tell them about the gospel. And they don't want Let them die. Don't give them food to fatten them up. Don't nourish them so they can live a little longer. Let them die. All you can do is plump them up for hell. And that, that, I like that, is to be cut off let it be cut off. Go to hell. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. Look at that. Cannibalism. These are the enemies of God. Let them die. Let them be cut off. Let them go eat themselves. The only food they're going to get is their fellow neighbor. Gross, isn't it? And I took my staff, Shepherd Ishmael, even beauty. So the staff and the staves are the same because it says, I took unto me two staffs, the one I call beauty. I took my staff, even beauty, capital B, and cut it asunder, not cut off, cut it asunder. That I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people. This would be Jesus Christ shedding his blood. Where it says in Hebrews, not the blood of bulls and goats. Bulls and bulls. Yeah. Bulls, yeah. bulls and goats, the blood no more required. Stop the sacrifices. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He broke, cut Jesus. Whips, thorns, pulling his beard. Going to make a new covenant. Not of works. At least any man should boast. And was broken in that day. We're going to see what this day is. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. So what are we talking about? And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. If not, forbear. You can or you may not. So they weighed for my price. 30 pieces of silver. Guess what the context is? It's the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. This is Judas sitting before the priest saying, How much will you give me? And they weighed it out. 30 pieces of silver. Now, wouldn't you think when those priests weighed out the 30 pieces of silver and start handling it to, to Judas, wouldn't you think, doesn't this sound familiar? Didn't we read somewhere that something about 30 pieces of silver for a guy? Why didn't they make it 31? Why don't they say, God, you know what? We're going to prove you wrong. 45 pieces. No. You know what God said? He said 30 pieces of silver. How much did Judas get? He got 30 pieces of silver. Prophecy that's fulfilled in Zechariah 11, 12. And it could have been changed. A priest could have came in and said, hey, hey, wait a minute, stop. Give him a little more money. It says 30 pieces of silver. Give him a little more. It absolutely did not happen. And they gave Judas exactly what the Bible says they gave him. How is that for prophecy? 
And the Lord said unto me, Cast it, the money, unto the potter. A goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Another prophecy that could have been changed that happened exactly as the Bible says. Judas goes in there and hands him 30 bucks or the silver's back. He repents to the priest. The priest take the money and say, this is, this is the price of blood. And they gave it to the potter for a field, I believe it's called Arcadia, something like that. Matthew 27, 3, 9, and 10. According to what God said, Judas and the priest, Judas priest, did exactly what the Bible told him to do. Now, how's that? Aren't you glad Peter wasn't there? He would have spoke right up. Peter had knowledge of the Bible. Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands. Now Isaiah 53 says, There's no beauty that we shall desire him. To the Lord God, Jesus Christ has always been beauty. A beautiful, sinless, 100% man. Now even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. The book of Acts. Many Jews believed on Jesus, but not all. The nation rejected him. They, they, they tortured and killed Christians and the apostles. So God said, okay, fine. That link between Israel and Judah, you don't even know who you are. As of 70 A.D. Malachi 3.1 You're done. Now, when I set out to the, to the heathen to believe on what you and who you have rejected, when I come back to you, I'm going to bruise you behind. You're going to get a punishment. It's going to be seven years long. And the Lord said unto me, how do you know that? Let's read what we're reading now. 12 and 13, Jesus Christ has been betrayed. He has been sold to the priest for a prophet. Verse 14, they have rejected Jesus Christ. They rejected beauty and bands. Watch what shows up next. Between 14 and 15, the gap theory is us. 15, and the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, and if you want to know about foolish, read the book of Proverbs. For lo, he has no wisdom. I will raise up a shepherd in the land. Well, shepherds in this, in this chapter. Shepherds who didn't take care of the, the, the flock. Jesus Christ as a shepherd. Here's another shepherd that God is going to raise up. Not Satan. This shepherd we're going to learn is sent by God. which shall not visit those that be cut off. Cut off again. It, he doesn't care about those that are going to hell. They're going to hell. Satan is not interested in the bar room. He's not hanging out at the whore's bed. He doesn't care if little Johnny's in the bathroom shooting up drugs. They're already on their way to hell. Satan cares about a church that wants to do right. Satan cares about a Christian who's going to step out of his door and, and find little John and tell him about the gospel. He's going to find somebody who's going to speak to that whore and give her the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's who Satan cares about. 
Satan's worried about those who will take those who are cut off and show them the light. Mark chapter 4, when the sower goes out. Neither shall he seek the young one, the lambs, the ewes. Doesn't this sound like preachers today? There are preachers that are symbolic of this shepherd. Nor heal that, that, I like that, is broken. There are people who are suffering anxieties, worries, and fear, and the shepherd's not taking care of them, and he don't care about them. Nor feed that standeth still. They're not doing nothing, they're not going anywhere, they're just standing. He's not going to feed them. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat of the sheep. Fat, ugh. I'm in a bad time to excuse me. Flesh of the fat. Do you know that in the law, eating of the fat was forbidden? In the sacrifices, the fat was supposed to be given to God. You were to burn off the fat and then the priest could have the meat. This shepherd is eating that which belongs to God. And the Antichrist is going to be literally eating Jews. They eat them in the mass now. And tear their claws in pieces. I don't know if sheep have claws. I've never seen one really that close. Got hooves. Whoa. To the idol. From Genesis 1 to Zechariah 11. Do you think God has something against idols? Woe to the idol shepherd. A shepherd that has an idol. Does that sound familiar? That leaveth the flock. Revelation 13, 3, Psalm 68, 21, Habakkuk 3, 13. He leaves his flock for whatever he believes in, whatever he loves. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. He's going to get a right shoulder and a right eye injury. Remember what Revelation says? He's killed. All the people mourn. His arm shall be clean, dried up, withered. No life. And I don't know when he's resurrected. If he gets his life back again, I'm not sure. And his right eye shall be utterly darkened and what a way to leave a chapter here's an idol shepherd that he's going to get a sword on his arm on his eye and we don't even talk about his resurrection but the idol i believe in revelation that set up i think it's set up after this Maybe, I'm trying to think now. Is it set up before? I know the idol is set up to whether the powers of, of the Antichrist or the power of this healing. But we enter this chapter a shepherd who does not take care of his flock, a shepherd that will lay down his life and be betrayed for his flock and rejected by his flock and then we come across the idol shepherd the first shepherd he's going to get angered from God God is is angry with him I'm just trying to find out that's what I was He's going to be smitten. 
the Lord Jesus Christ will be cut asunder while the first shepherd will be cut off. Jesus will be cut. He'll be cut it asunder. He will begin a new covenant with his people. He will be betrayed, shepherd. A goat will sell him out. They will reject the shepherd. Then up comes a shepherd sent by God again, but the idol shepherd. And the idol shepherd is exactly as the first shepherd. He's not taking care of the sheep. Now, on your own, go read John chapter 10 and see what Jesus Christ says about himself taking care of his sheep and those who will not take care of the sheep. Those are called hirelings. That's also in chapter 11. 